Hi, it's Krista Janik here to talk to you about my personal and professional journey from scared kid to networker, business owner, and skier who happens to be blind. On the Parker Daniels Show, I'm going to be talking to you also about my business, Wise Words That Matter. I work with businesses and nonprofits to face the often overwhelming challenge of getting noticed. Greetings. Welcome to another edition of the Parker Daniels Show. I have a very special guest today. I'm going to just use her first name. Her name is Krista. Krista, <coughs> excuse me, kind of hoarse today. Is going to talk about her professional journey from being a scared kid to a networker, business owner, and a skier. She also uh, has a business entitled Wise Words That Matter, and she worked with nonprofit organizations and other businesses to, fel- to face the unwhelming challenges of getting noticed. Now, before I jump into the interview, I want to say thanks for having Crystal here. Crystal, thanks for being here. Um, to tell my subscribers to subscribe to the Parker Daniel Show, hit that like button, the notification bell, so that you can get updates on special shows. And certain, this is one of a very exciting and special show that I can't wait to hear uh, Krista's story. So, without further delay, I'm going to bring on Krista. Krista, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having me. No, thanks for having No, I'm glad to have you on here. And I'm, you know, know that, you know, certain things or whatever, whatever, but we can talk about that. But tell the individuals a little bit about yourself. And we're going to work our way up to talking about your businesses and, and, and why you gave it the name and what what, what are you uh, uh, accomplishing with that. So, your story, your dime, your time. Go ahead. All right. So, I am, basically, I, I started out, uh, I've always had a story in my head ever since I was a kid. And so, I've always uh, wanted to kind of do my own thing in a way. And, uh, like, when I was a little kid, I wrote a story about a girl who could travel up into space, uh, and but she didn't need a space, shoot, a space suit, she didn't need a spaceship, she didn't need anything. That was kind of a fantasy. So my teacher goes, oh, she needs a spaceship, she needs a space suit, and I'm like, but it's my story, my character, I'll do what I want. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um... You know, so so. I obviously I grew up, branched out from there, and I worked with newspapers, a hospitality industry, trade journal, and nonprofits, and then I went on to form my own business, Wise Words That Matter, when the uh, economy wasn't so great, and I realized, what am I doing? I can either sit here, do nothing, wait for the phone to ring. Or I can go out there and get clients now and make a little money. So that's what I did. Okay. And, and before you go further, I want to uh, actually piggyback on that. Um, I, I definitely echo those sentiments because as a totally blind individual, it's it's, it's rather hard for any people to find jobs. And, and, and it's not a pity party. Believe me, I've, I've talked with you. I know that you are not the type of person that looks for a pity. But definitely, sometimes if you can't find a, you know anything or any job or anything that, that's, that's going to suit you, you go out and create something that, you know, create your own lane and hopefully people will be able to come and quote unquote knock at your door. So with that being said, um, Tell the individuals a little bit before you jump into your business. I'm, I'm excited about your, uh, you know, your uh, your blindness, visually impaired. Uh, how long have you been blind and whatnot? Yeah, so I'm totally blind. I've been blind since birth, and so, but oh, and over time, um, I've learned to adapt more and more, and I've faced challenges over time. Like I said, I mean that that journey that I've got going. Um, I was, I was a pretty scared, cautious kid. Um, I was scared to walk around my block even. And then as time went on, I started facing more and more fears and overcoming challenges until now where uh, I, I went skiing this past weekend. And I'm excited to talk about that. And we do have some film that we're going to put in the, uh, uh, in the interview. But uh, tell the people about some of the challenges 
that you had to overcome and some of the fears that you had to overcome because some black people do actually have certain fears you know because they can't say they feel the way i don't want to walk this way i don't want to do this i mean let the people know how you were able to to emerge from that and be the successful businesswoman that you are <laughs> yeah sure so so when i was a kid um i was working with a a travel training instructor and I really wanted to face my fear of walking around the block alone because I knew that if I couldn't even walk around the block alone that I wasn't going to be able to go places, do things. I'm a very social person, outgoing, and I love to meet new people and do things. So I knew that I had to face this fear. And I was like 13, so I wasn't that little, but I was, I was a kid. Um, a teenager mm. and so I uh, the first time that the travel training instructor she kind of like took her car and then she like drove away uh, leaving me on the street and I started having a panic attack I was like what if some somebody comes to kidnap me what if uh, you know what if the cars don't see me what if they're not paying attention what if what if all these different what if right. uh, things that I came up with in my scared head mm. So ultimately I ran and I made it home and basically the way through it was just to do it over and over again and realize that nothing bad happened to me each time and the other side of it is it's not like I and I've had guidance I knew where I was going I knew what I was doing um, and, and that, that's kind of the way that I faced all of my fears is that I look for people who know the way and I understand that they have the, the path, you know, and I, I try and face my fears with people, get, get help and guidance along the way, and, um, and to take, if possible, I try and take little steps okay. uh, to get to, to start to face that fear. Okay, great. Now maybe you could answer this question for me. Do you think most blind people have, uh, are more fearful than, than let's say maybe sighted people or any, any other individuals who, who have a different type of impairment and if that's the case why do you think so I really have no idea I wouldn't I wouldn't even try to judge that okay well, I can only tell you from my own experience well, that I, go ahead. Um, my parents were very protective they were always saying be careful be careful be careful so I'm sure that didn't help. Mm -hmm, I know. And then on the other side, I'm just a cautious person in general. And I find that, I think the other part of it is that sometimes blind people, especially totally blind people, start doing certain things at a later age than their sighted peers very often. For instance? So, uh, like... I didn't do the, the buddy thing, walking to the bus stop as a little kid. I didn't do that, mm -hmm. whereas a lot of my friends did. Oh. So, so, I mean, I, I'm going to just throw in my opinion and, and say that it, it could be because of, like, you know, just them not being able to see and just, just be a re being reluctant to try. But that has not been, or that wasn't the case with you because, again, uh, you were able to... Uh, be a uh, successful businesswoman. So let's talk about your business and why you have the name and what would you actually do and things of that nature. Okay, so wise words that matter uh, comes from, I was doing, I was actually on freelance sites and I had a couple of different, I had one that was wise words and, and one that was words that matter and I just kind of combined them. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my idea is that because I'm a writer, and I also do some PR, I want to help people to share their wise words, their words that matter in their businesses, or if they're an expert, if they're innovative, if they're, they've got this great message to share, but they're not quite sure how to connect with their audience. Okay, so you're like the liaison between them and the, the actual, them getting it, their, their, their writing out, out there to the public, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll talk about that, that and let everyone know basically, uh, how long you've been in existence and what you know great accomplishments that you've done since you've been uh you know uh, up and running no i'm not one to brag about accomplishments but yeah this is your show brag <laughs> brag for real go ahead but but uh you know i've been in business 
uh, since 2000. And I started really going out there and in, in, in the networking world and all that in 2012 mm. when I realized that I wasn't going to get the business that I wanted just by sitting in my room and getting work online. Okay, let me stop I right, realized let me that stop right there. Get, let me stop right there. What, what type of business was it that you wanted? I want, you know, I'm I want a writer to, okay. and I do PR. Okay, go ahead. So I realized that I wasn't going to get the the business that I wanted. The the, the level of work and the, the money, the, the value for my work. When you when you're on an online marketplace, a lot of times you're competing against people all around the world. Right. And there's there's a huge issue with with budget for a lot of those clients. So I realized that because I was really afraid that people were just going to see my cane, right? And they were going to see the blind girl, and they weren't going to see Krista Janik, the writer, right? They were going to see the blind girl. And have sympathy and, and whatnot for you. I know what you're talking about. Go ahead. So I had to face that fear because if I didn't, I realized that I wasn't going to go anywhere. I wasn't going to do anything. It was kind of a black and white sort of thing mm. that I was really feeling pretty desperate. Mm. And I knew that something had to change. So, And sometimes that's what makes people face a fear is the knowledge that if they don't do it, they're actually going to be worse off than if they do. That's a good point. Darn good point. Can you repeat that one more time for those who probably just dropped something or walked out the room and came back? Say that again. I said sometimes, at least this was the case for me, sometimes people decide to face their fears because it's a, it's a desperate act almost. It's like, I'm going to be worse off if I don't face this fear than if I do face the fear. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's also people around me and just my own inner confidence telling me that actually yes I can do this and I am capable and I and I can face the fear and it's getting talking to the right people people who've been through this kind of stuff people who face fears uh, learning about positive more positive thoughts and also t telling a, a better story mm -hmm. so I could tell the story of myself being kidnapped and murdered and whatever else walking around the block or I could tell the story of I'm gonna make it home I'm gonna walk I'm gonna walk I'm gonna smile because I'm really happy about facing this fear and uh, I'm going to get there that's a good point you, you are definitely bringing out some good points just focusing on the positives as opposed to let your mind think about what may happen in, in a, you know in a negative sense and that will take a, uh, take you definitely a, a long way um Continue, because this is a good story. I don't want to interject anything, Michael. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so I'll just finish and say that it's 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 not so much the standard focus on. It's not so much always positive all the time. It's not as much as that. It's more like if you're gonna if your mind is gonna make up a story, you might as well try to make up a good one, because stories are what make our emotions go and they get us into it and. So it's not so much about fighting with all of your negative feelings. It's more like, well, let me tell a story. And the story just made make me feel a little better. That's true. I, I hope that a lot of people definitely take heed. A lot of, because I have uh, sighted audiences as well. Just people in general, whenever you have fears and whatnot, <clears throat> you face them in this capacity, as opposed to the old, you know, what may happen, you know, the, the negatives. And, and, you know, you, be, you definitely have a better turnout. Now, uh, as far as your, your business, why is words that matter? How successful have you been in, 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 as, as opposed to you actually train individuals or you work with, I know you say you do the you know, work with- I'm a writer and I do PR. So I've gotten people into their local newspapers. I've gotten people on TV. And I also write content for their websites, their blog posts. And a lot of what I do for them has to do with getting their, boosting their credibility and getting them to really articulate what they have to say, what makes them different. And so many companies are always writing about me, 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 I'm the best, I'm the best, I'm so great, I'm number one, blah, 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 I'm so successful. Instead of how they actually help customers, writing it from their customers or their clients' point of view. Okay. So in my case, 
my clients tend to be overwhelmed, they have a lot on their plate, and they're looking to outsource some of this marketing, this content marketing, because they realize that they might be great speakers, uh, they might not necessarily be good writers, or they might not have the time, and they're struggling to really relate to their audiences. So they, they might be really passionate about their business, but they don't necessarily know what to say to their audience. That's, that's okay, and you definitely have them out there. That's, that's, that's very important while uh, talking to the audience. So if you definitely need someone to assist you in this capacity and, and to elevate your business, you know, and, and get you out there in, in various uh, outlets, this would be definitely the one that you need to contact, but I don't know if she, you know, what what her prices are. But she's gonna put the links. I'm gonna get the links uh, to her um, her business, and so I'll do a little promotional type thing for for her because I'm very, you know, imp impressed. And I'm, I'm not just you know because she's visually visually impaired. Just the fact that she's doing stuff, you know, and, and not just as a buying person just sitting home waiting for a, a, a check to come. And you may agree with what I what I said earlier about creating your own business, or if nothing works for you, Chris, Crystal. I'm sorry, it's it's a little bit difficult to hear you. I said you you might be um uh you, you echo those sentiments as I said earlier about actually getting out and, and creating your own business as, as, if nothing comes you know for you and whatnot after you've gone through the in the colleges and graduated um, instead of just sitting at home you know to create your own lane like you did right. Absolutely. I think that if, if you have skills and that, that creating a business might be a path for you, or just even if you don't think of it as a business right away, because I sure didn't, but just getting some, some side, getting some projects, getting, building my portfolio, doing things. And online is a great place to start that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that's what, uh, that's what I've done as a, as a writer, um, okay. and I really enjoy working with with all kinds of businesses and nonprofits. I also have a webinar that I run, which you might find interesting if you are considering starting your own business, or if you're if you have a business that you're looking to promote and get noticed. Good. And you can go to wisewordsthatmatter.com/webinar. That's a free interactive webinar where you can participate. Okay. Give it to him once, once, one more time. Wisewordsthatmatter.com slash webinar. Okay, definitely. Um, and I'm also going to put that, the, uh, in the, I'm going to get the links from you and put it in, in the description. But um, Yeah, it's called Get Noticed Now. That's the name of the webinar, and it is free, so you'd be able to register for that. And I'd love to hear from people. I, I know I myself, I'm a lifelong student, so I definitely can relate to people who just want to learn more. Okay. And are you working on any other businesses or is this your main baby right here? This is my business. I'm a writer and I also do public relations. And so I'm looking at creating some more workshops that maybe I can educate people or help them to get it done. I'm starting something new called the Copy Connections Workshop, which is kind of like a, a brainstorming session uh, but it's it's uh, it's all about creating the copy that will get you results. Okay, yeah, don't, I don't want to give them too much because they got people that probably want to, you know, copy what you're doing. When not, I want you to definitely put that out into the forefront. But before we close, uh, do you have any, uh, any any words of maybe encouragement or something that you've gone through that you want to share with the people that will help them through their fears and be, you know, able to t tackle the world? Uh, well, we didn't talk about my skiing very much. Okay. Yeah, that, I'm, I was gonna get, I was gonna get to that definitely, but I want to uh, close. You know, that's gonna be like the little land yeah. But uh, yeah, let's talk about my let's let's uh, because people are always asking about my skiing, and I'll uh, kind uh, of give, or give close them, it up. Give them a little advice, right quick, so we can move on to that. Like, yeah. So, so when when I was when I started to, I, I when I was younger, I always wanted to ski. It was kind of like a fantasy of mine, but then. I kind of got like, oh, I, I don't think I can, do, I, I don't, I didn't really believe it was true. So my advice for people out there is kind of, if you want to do something, but you don't know how, or you don't think it can be done, always try to, try to find people who are actually doing it and see if they'll talk to you. 
because at least for me, I felt like I had nothing to lose. I talked to them, I called them, I asked loads and loads of questions, and I realized that actually they have a system. They have a way for blind people to ski. And it's safe, and the beginners go home in one piece, and I, they said, and I was like, oh my gosh, what if I don't like it? And they said, you know what? If you don't like it, then at least you're up here with us having fun <laughs> and enjoying the snow, and that's perfectly okay. You, you're welcome to come down and try it. Okay. Uh, I, that's something I wanted to do when I was little. haven't had the chance to, hopefully, uh, in the near future before I move on to the next level, I'll I, I definitely, you know, be able to try something like that. Or even if not, you know, maybe uh, bungee jumping, but we definitely have this, the, the um, video and we're gonna uh, let everyone check you out. Cause I, I mean, I let my, my girlfriend check out. She was definitely impressed. So um, before we close again, uh, give them some, you know, a, a little bit more words of encouragement that they, they can use from you and they can take it and use it in their lives. Um, I think I've pretty much shared. I'll, I'll to sum it up. It's kind of like, you know, it's just sometimes it's just about taking a small step. Take that one small step, whether it's talking to somebody who's done it, writing a little story about yourself, about you facing the fear, uh, figuring out, you know, can I really do this? Because success builds on success. Yep. And definitely associate yourself. Like I said, so like I like what you said. Associate yourself with people who have done things before that you definitely can, you know, build on. So with that being said, I want to give thank my audience for subscribing. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of the Parker Daniel Show, and I'm glad to have had um, Krista on here and talk uh, about the fears that she faced and she overcame those and has become the businesswoman that she is and created uh, her. Um, web page and website and her you know and it's definitely helping people so with that being said Krista thank you for coming on the show and I wish you the best of luck thanks and I hope uh, maybe I'll see you on the slope someday oh no really I hope so I mean I, I, I don't know when but I, def I definitely like to try something like that though you um, know what I'm just a beginning skier but but because I've tried it and a lot of people haven't haven't tried it even that puts me in a different category. Thank I'm not you. just the blind girl yep. anymore. Yep. I'm the, the blind skier. Definitely. Well, I, create, I appreciate your professionalism, and I will be getting in touch with you soon. Thanks a lot, sweetie. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Turn to the right and go to the left. Okay. Oh, good job. All right. You're good. Keep going. Turn to the right. Turn to the right. Turn to the left a little bit. Okay. Yep, you're good. Yay. Oh, I made it? <laughs> oh, man.